who typically stands up and, and does this part. I am the professional speaker. Teresa's the professional counselor. So, so you know, very seldom do I go into the counseling room. There have been occasions where we have, you know, worked with couples together. And, and you know, very seldom does Teresa stand and do this. So, so we each have our element that we're more comfortable in. But uh, I guess she, since I went to the counseling room last time, she owed me a trip to, to the public stage. But I'm not sure this is her favorite thing to do. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we've got a, a lot of good information this year. Let's, let's you know, I won't reread because actually the, the scripture that was read set the stage perfectly. If you remember, you know, Adam said, this is bone of my bones. And, you know, the Lord said, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and unites his wife and become one flesh. And that's repeated again, just, just for your records, in Matthew 19, 4 through 6. It's repeated again in Mark 10, 7 through 9. You know, it's that constant theme. So here's what we're going to try to do tonight. And this is what I've told a couple of times. Since God invented marriage, it would make sense to kind of look at his plan for how we want to be effective in having a great marriage. And that would just make sense to me. A man who invented it, you know, the guy who invented it would know something about it. So, so that, that's, you know, in terms of sharing those things, that's kind of what we're going to do with you guys here tonight. So we're going to start with the whole idea of, of isolation. Isolation, and, and that's, that's the opposite of oneness. And see, that's how Satan works. Okay, so God has called us to be one, but Satan, in his attempts to be divisive and destructive, attempts to isolate us. And so, guys, what we're going to do tonight is talk about five threats five crucial threats to marriages that if we can identify those threats and not allow them to in our marriage, we can have, you know, not only a good marriage, as a matter of fact, you know one reason that America doesn't have, and forget about America, <laughs> Jackson, Mississippi, one reason there are not more great marriages is because we have a lot of good marriages. And, and the reason I had from the very beginning, I, I think was a very good marriage, but I wasn't satisfied with that. I was like, how I marriage can be better? I never wanted to be the person where it was miserable to go home. And in, in our 26 years of marriage, you know, that's, that's not the way we've been. We're about the grace of God. So we're going to talk a little bit about isolation. Um, in those passages, there are basically three things that, that we can pull out of that passage about leaving and cleaving. So, so T, set, set the stage for us about Get the three things that God kind of calls us to do. Okay, number one, which is lead. Uh, this indicates that in the family there are two relationships. There's a parent-child relationship, and this is a temporary one. We get them ready to launch them off. We don't want them to stay there. We you know, get them out of the house. There's a husband-wife relationship, and this is the permanent one. This is what God has joined together and that no man separate when it comes from them. Problems occur in the family life when there, when these two roles are reversed. Uh, the parent-child relationship is treated as a primary relationship. And I know women that the children are young, they need our care, and yes, we do, that, that's our job. We nurture them, we help them, we raise them. But, that is not the number one relationship. Uh, it should be the husband-wife relationship. And, and in counseling, Teresa can tell you, we see a lot of instances, like a lot of couples are asking us back in our interest as well, you know, how is it being empty nesting? And, and I, I, I tell everybody, we're having more fun. I mean, and we enjoy our kids, we're fortunate, we enjoy our children, but, but this is a different time of our life, and, and since we never, <laughs> guys, okay, Make a couple of disclaimers. Um, I, I don't know any other way than to keep it really real. So when we tell stories, I mean, I mean, I, we open up and let you guys see inside our house a little bit. Sometimes Teresa goes home and she's embarrassed. Why don't you tell the story? But but I don't know. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. But, but but I mean, we we share really from the heart, and and and, and we see a lot of people getting in trouble in their marriage kind of because they've always made their marriage about the kids. Now the kids are leaving. They're kind of in trouble. I can tell our kids this all the time. Don't make any mistake how you fit in here. You've got 
got your, you know, you got your mother, you got me, and you got y'all. Let's don't ever get this confused. I don't know, that's kind of cruel. But I used to like kids all the time. I mean, don't ever get confused about how y'all fit in this whole situation. <laughs> we basically let y'all stay with us. Who 